All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. I'm going to give all praise to Abba y'all by Shema, Shaka, and Shah. Peace and blessings to all the beloved ones, baptized in the Holy Spirit for the remission of sins, to the glorious blood sacrifice of my Shaka, and Shah. Peace and love. All right, Shalom, Shalom. Today, man, I'm going to be going into a couple verses, man, to show that the Most High has a temple in heaven. Which um, I'm going to show using verses in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Proving that the Heavenly Father has a heavenly temple, man. That cannot be destroyed. Right? Because uh, you got um, a group of Israelites uh, known as Israelite Tried and Refined. And I remember they did a video a while back. Basically saying that, uh, you know, the Most High doesn't have a, a, a eternal temple basically and all that because they read about uh the Ezra's uh the first <laughs> they read about the temple that Solomon built and the temple and they think that the most high doesn't have another temple set up that's already established in the heaven which I'm gonna uh, bring out some verses to prove that he has a heavenly temple and that Nazariah and Inop of ITR those type of brothers, you know, they put this in the mind of a lot of uh, brothers that was following them to think that the Most High don't have a heavenly temple, which is totally wicked and totally uh, anti-Christ and anti-New Covenant. That's why those guys, <clears throat> they don't even believe in the New Testament anymore, right? And they took down their video about the temple. So they not even pushing that information anymore. Yet, people that followed them and was uh, under them and uh, fellowship with them is still pushing those uh, vibrations and those doctrines, man, that come from Nazariah and I not. They were the first one to teach that uh, lesson about Ezekiel's temple and that there's no uh, heavenly temple, man, which I'm going to get verses to show that there's a heavenly temple, man. And that the Most High says that he has a heavenly temple and that it will be with the children of Israel in the eternal kingdom of the new covenant, man. All right. So I got a couple verses, which um, I'm going to start with 1 Corinthians first. I mean, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Hamashiach, who in presence and base among you, but being absent, I am bold toward you, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be uh, bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh, right? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, which this is a stronghold that uh, those Israelite tried and brothers put on people, man, and bewitch people, thinking that there's no uh, holy temple, which there's plenty of verses to prove that there's a heavenly temple, which is uh, the most highest heavenly temple, man, and it's, it's too many scriptures to prove it, man, which I got about 17, <laughs> I got about 17 verses proving that the most high has a heavenly tabernacle, he has a heavenly uh, temple, man. Right? And uh, that's a stronghold among uh, the, the scattered Israelites, the Gentile Israelites, that um, you know, the Hellenized Israelites, that uh, that there's no there's no more temple, and uh, there won't ever be a temple, and there's just no temple. You know what I'm saying? Which that's a total lie. You know, the temple is in heaven, and uh, I got verses to prove it, which it is the New Jerusalem. All right, this is Psalms chapter one twenty seven. Verse 1, a song of degree, degrees for Solomon. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. So guess what? This is Solomon speaking about if the Most High don't build the house, it's all vain, man. And uh, that's what it is, man. The temple that Solomon built, even Solomon knew it was vain. 
You know what I'm saying? Because the most high didn't make it, man. It was made by human hands, man. Like the scriptures tell you, the most high dwelleth not in temples made by human hands, man. Right? So all those temples that were made by human hand, those were temporary. It was vain. It wasn't eternal. Right? Just like uh, Solomon's temple, that was that was temporary. Uh, the temple that was built in a time of Nehemiah, Ezra, and Zerubbabel, temporary. It was vain, man. Because the Most High didn't build that house. Okay, this is my second verse proving uh, that the Most High temple was always eternal in the heavens, man. This is Isaiah 66, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest, man? Right? So, uh, there was no house built unto the most high that was eternal rest, man. All right? He said, where is the house that ye build unto me? Where is it? Right? Because, uh, the temple, uh, Solomon's temple was destroyed. Uh, the second temple destroyed. And that's just what it is, man. And on top of that, the Most High said, the heaven is my throne, man. Not Solomon's temple or the temple built in the time of Nehemiah and Zerubbabel and Ezra's, man. The heaven is his throne, man. His temple is in heaven. Because his throne is in heaven, man. Don't say his throne is Solomon's temple or the second temple. All right. My third verse is going to be Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1. Now of the, the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, man. So guess what? Like I said before, the most high throne is in the heavens. Not uh, the temple that uh, was built in the time of Nehemiah and Zerubbabel, man. Not Solomon's temple. That's not the most highest throne. Those were just a temporary uh, shadow of, of the eternal temple to come. Right? We have such an high priest who was set on the, th the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. And a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man, right? So except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain, man. The most highest uh, throne and, and sanctuary and true tabernacle in heaven, it is in vain, man. It's the true tabernacle which is in heaven, right? Which is a real temple, man, right? A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle. That's in the heavens, man. Let's get uh, the, the Greek word for uh, sanctuary, okay? It says a sacred thing, spot, holiest of all, holy place, sanctuary, man. I'm talking about the most highest holy place in the heavens, man, okay? And a true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. So let's get that in the Greek. Right? The most high holy place in the heavens where his throne is. Not uh, Nehemiah and Zerubbabel temple. And the time of Ezra. Right? The true tabernacle. Right? Let's get this word for tabernacle tent. Shekinah. Strong's G 4633. Skene. 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 Shalakia. I say it. Shekinah. Which is Skene. Tent. Tabernacle. Made of green bowls or skins or other materials. Talking about the worldly one. Uh, of that well known movable temple of God after the pattern of which the temple at Jerusalem was built. Tabernacle. Habitation. Uh tent, cloth, hut, fig, literally or figuratively, habitation, tabernacle, okay, tabernacle, man, the true tabernacle, 
which the Lord pitched and not man. So this tabernacle is in heaven. Man ain't make this one, man. And it's 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 a true tabernacle, the real temple. Okay? Let's get this word for pitch. The word pitch means to uh to make fast, to fix. Strong G 4078. Pagnomy. Pagnomy. Right? Pegnomy, which means to build by fastening together. Pitch. To set up a tent. So this is the true tent in heaven, man. Where the Mashiach is on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens, man. Not not Hamashiach is on the right hand in the temple, in, in Solomon's temple, or in the temple made in the time of uh, uh, Nehemiah and Ezra, man. No. The, 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 the real temple that's in heaven where Yahweh is on the right hand of the heavenly father a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man see that so that's talking about the heavenly temple man Hebrews chapter 8 verse 3 for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices Wherefore it is of necessity it is of necess necessity necessity slacking. Wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, man. So guess what? All that old covenant temple and all that, that was an example of heavenly things because you have a heavenly temple, man. And there are scriptures in the book of Revelation where you see uh, the altar and you see the angels uh, um, burning incense on the incense altar. So those were examples of heavenly things, man. There is a heavenly temple. It's in the book of Revelation. Right? Well, I'm going to give verses on that later, but, you know, this is just showing that those uh, priests were examples of the heavenly in the heavens, man, as in heaven, so on earth, man, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown, shewed to thee in the mount. Right. So the point was that those were example and shadow of heavenly things, and they were ex examples of the things that happen in the heavens, man. Let's keep it going. All right, this is my fourth verse out of my 17 verses proving that the Most High has a heavenly temple in the heavens that's eternal, which is the New Jerusalem. Right, and this is going to be Psalms chapter 11, verse 1, to prove that this is King David speaking. Way this is before Solomon's temple was even built, man. Right, a psalm of David, in the Lord have I put my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? Which I'm gonna jump down on Psalms 11, verse 4. The Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord's throne is in heaven so the lord's throne is on is in heaven just like when i read in hebrews chapter 8 how hamashiach yawashai is on the right hand of majesty sitting on the throne of the right hand of majesty he's in the temple in heaven man okay the most high is not just uh you know floating in uh you know without a throne man <laughs> you know he's just floating in outer space somewhere no nah. Psalms 111 verse 4, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven, right? Just like it says in Hebrews, Hamashiach is on the right hand of the throne of majesty. So he's in the Lord's temple with the heavenly father. The Lord is in the holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of man. So the most high has a temple and throne in heaven, man. Not, uh... Solomon's temple in the second temple, man, and Herod's temple. All right, this is my fifth verse, proving that the Most High has a temple in heaven, man, and King David even understood this, man. This is uh, Psalms chapter 18, 
right? Which, if you jump to verse one, it proves that it's David, man, right? So Psalms chapter 18, verse six, Psalms 18 and six, and it says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord and I cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears, man. So David is not talking about Solomon's temple. He's talking about the temple in heaven, man. All right, this is my sixth verse proven the Most High has a heavenly temple, man, in the heaven. All right? This is not talking about Solomon's temple, and it ain't talking about the temple that was built in the time of Ezra's, Nehemiah, and Zerubbabel. When uh, Cyrus freed the Israelites and all that. It ain't talking about that. This is talking about the heavenly temple, man. All right? Isaiah is not in Solomon's temple or in uh, the temple, the second temple. It's Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne so he's not seeing the lord in solomon's temple or he's not seeing the lord in uh the second temple man he's not seeing the lord in those temples made by human hands he's seeing the lord in the spirit realm in his temple in the spirit world and in that year king Uzziah died i saw also the lord sitting upon a throne remember the lord's throne is in the heavens man so I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the, te the temple, right? So that's talking about the temple in the heaven, man, right? When it says his train filled the temple, that's talking about the hem of the Most High's garment, right, in his temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings and twain he covered his face and with twain he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. So this ain't talking about angels flying in Solomon's temple or in uh, the temple, the second temple, man. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. That house is referring to the temple. Right? Then said I, what was me? For I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. It's about Isaiah. And this is, uh, uh, you know, if you go into uh, the Apocrypha books in history, this is why he, Satan came and killed Isaiah by King Manasseh, Hezekiah's son, uh, King Manasseh was the one that destroyed Isaiah because he saw the most high in the spirit realm. He seen Yahweh Shah. Right? The, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand. Where is he getting this coal from? Which he have taken with the tongs from off the altar. So there's an altar in the heaven and the, and the angel is dealing with the coals, man, and the incense. Just like in Revelation. Same thing in Isaiah chapter 6. Right? And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Right? So that's that's what it is, man. Uh, Isaiah is seeing the angels and the Most High in the spirit realm. And his sins was forgiven, man. Right? <laughs> so he was in the holy temple in the spirit uh, realm, man. Right? All right, this is going to be my seventh verse. Proving that the Most High has a heavenly temple that's, et that's eternal, that can't be destroyed, and can't be moved, man. All right? This is Isaiah chapter 33. I'm going to start at verse 14. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness have surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell 
with the devouring fire. Remember, the Lord our God is a consuming fire. Who's going to dwell with the Lord our God who is a consuming fire, right? Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burning? Right, this is talking about being with the heavenly father. This ain't talking about uh, being tormented or nothing like that. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him, his waters shall be sure. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall, just like Isaiah saw the king, the Lord of hosts, in his temple. Thy eyes shall see the king in his beauty. Thy, thy, they shall behold the land that is very far off. Thine heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the towers? Thou shalt not see a fierce people, right? Thou shalt not see a fierce people. We're still, we're, we're still seeing fierce people right now. So showing you this ain't been totally fulfilled, man. A people of deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. Look upon Zion, the city of our solemn, solemn, uh, Thine, thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed. Neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken, man. So this is right here in prophesied in Isaiah that this uh, tabernacle it won't it won't be taken down man right it said not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken so we know isaiah 33 and 20 is not talking about solomon's temple it's not talking about the temple that was built after cyrus it's not talking about none of those temples this is talking about the heavenly jerusalem Right, a tabernacle, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed. Neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. It's not gonna happen, man. So this tabernacle has to come to pass, man. Yahweh Shai said in the new covenant, "Think not that I am come to destroy the prophets, man." He didn't destroy Isaiah 33 and 20. It says this tabernacle shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed, man. So you can't make Isaiah a false prophet and uh, say that there's ever not going to ever be no temple. That's that's going off, man. Because Isaiah says this temple shall not be taken down. Right? It, it's not going to be removed, man. Let's get some uh, he Hebrew definition. Right? This uh, tabernacle is uh, the dwelling, the uh, tent of of uh, Jehovah Yahweh, the tabernacle, right? The covering, the tent, his home, his house. But there, but there, the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams, wherein shall go no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ship pass thereby. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Thy tacklings are loose. They could not uh, well strengthen their mass. They could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of a great spoil divided. The lame take the prey. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. See, our people are still sick, man. So this has not been fulfilled, man. It says the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. We see our people sick right now. Right? The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity, right? And uh, we're in a time period of our sins being forgiven so we can go back to the homeland. All right. 
So Isaiah 33 and 20 has been fulfilled. Look upon Zion, the city of our Salem, Salem, uh, Salem, many, Salem, Salem, if I'm saying it right. Thy eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. So this new Jerusalem is not going to be taken down, man. All right. That's in the prophets. And Hamashiach Yahushua said he didn't come to destroy the prophets, man. All right. All right, this is going to be my eighth verse, which is going to be Psalm chapter 125, verse 1, a song of degrees. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever, man. Right? Just like I read in Isaiah 33 and 20, that that new uh, Zion, um, that tabernacle should not be taken down, man. Right, just like it says in Psalms 125, verse 1, uh, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. Alright, this is going to be my ninth verse. This is my ninth verse, which is Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 27. Alright, or I'll start at Ezekiel, let's see where I want to start at. I can start at Ezekiel 37, right? Which when you read Ezekiel 37, this is talking about the resurrection, which I already did a video on this a while back. So uh, the resurrection hasn't came to pass yet, man. We still waiting for the resurrection, right? It's uh, Ezekiel 37, verse uh, 23. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, which Israel is still uh, dealing with idolatry and idols nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places. See that? Israel hasn't been saved out of all their dwelling places. Israel is still among the Gentiles. So let's not play crazy like we're not among the Gentiles. Wherein they have sinned, and I will cleanse them, so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. So this is in Ezekiel. Ezekiel says David is going to be king over Israel after the resurrection. So guess what? Ezekiel is prophesying about David coming back. This ain't talking about uh, uh, Masha and reincarnation. Right? This is talking about King David coming back in the resurrection. And King David is already dead in the grave. So this is prophecy of King David coming back in the resurrection. Right, he's gonna be over the physical. Uh, he's gonna be the physical king over Israel. Hamashiach is uh, is gonna be over us in the spirit, but H David will be over us in the flesh. Right when we get back in Israel, and David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. We're not going back to the homeland and think you're not going to walk in the Most High's judgments and observe his statues and do them. It's not, it's not going down. And they that dwell in the land that I have gave unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever. So we're going to have children, and our children is going to have children forever. So you guys confused on Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, you just stumbling at a parable, man. All right? Thinking that uh, there won't be no uh, children, children in the kingdom. You guys stumbling at that, that cornerstone. All right? That's what it is, man. Hamashiach didn't come away to do the prophet. Now, now, no, now our children won't have children, and our children's children will have children in the kingdom, brother, because I read a scripture in the New Testament that I don't understand and I twist it. Come on, man. Right? Not understanding the resurrection, thinking that our children won't have children in the kingdom. Total folly. Right? Let's keep it going. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. So this ain't talking about uh, 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 them coming out of Babylon and they may... No. 
This is talking about the the, the new covenant, man. Right? Because all those other stuff, they all fell short. And they need to be renewed in the Mashiach. Right? And I will place them and multiply them. See that? So we are going to have children in the kingdom. Most High said he's going to multiply us. And will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. He said he's going to put his sanctuary in the midst of us forevermore. That ain't happened yet, man. This ain't talking about this first temple and the second temple. That wasn't in the midst of us forevermore, man. Let's not play crazy and act like we don't see what the scriptures say. Okay? Because the scriptures plainly say he's going to set his makodash or makodashe, right? In the midst of Israel, man, forevermore, man. Right? That word for sanctuary is makodash, which is his sacred place, his holy place. Sanctuary of the temple of the tabernacle of Ezekiel's temple of Jehovah Sanctuary holy place Makwadash uh, Especially a palace sanctuary Ch Chapel holy part holy place sanctuary All Right the most I said this sanctuary is going to be in the midst forevermore Solomon's temple wasn't in the midst forevermore Right the second temple wasn't in the midst forevermore the second temple was destroyed First temple destroyed. So this ain't what that's talking about, man. Right? I will set my sanctuary. Right? And we know King David. This is talking about when King David is resurrected. So we know this ain't taking the past yet. And this is talking about when we go back into the homeland and do the statues and judgments. That ain't happened yet. He said, I will save them out of all their dwelling places. That ain't happened yet. I will make them... Uh, one nation that ain't happened yet israel talking about they don't know who israel is so how, there, there's no way this happened man right this is this is prophecy waiting to be fulfilled man when the most high bring our people out of their graves man he resurrect them that's when king david will be our king after the resurrection king david's resurrected and we go our children gonna have children and David shall be their prince forever. That ain't happened yet, man. David is still in the grave, man. So no, this ain't happened yet, all right? Nah, brother, the whole book of Ezekiel was fulfilled in the time of Babylon. No. Nazariah and Inop is going the hell off, man. It ain't been fulfilled. Right? And their children and their children's children. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. David ain't been resurrected or reincarnated to be our prince forever. Unless you follow in one west and you, you believe my shah is, is, is King David. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. Right? It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. That ain't happened yet. The Most High hasn't put his sanctuary in the midst of Israel forevermore. His holy place. Ain't happened yet, man. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yeah, I will be their God and they shall be my people, man. The Most High's tabernacle is not with us right now, man. This hasn't been fulfilled yet. This Ezekiel 37, the whole chapter talking about the resurrection, man. So anybody saying that uh, this this was fulfilled in Babylon and all that? No, man. The resurrection ain't happened after after the Babylonian captivity, man. All right. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yeah, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. This is talking about the eternal tabernacle. His sanctuary, his holy place, his makwadash. It shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Solomon's temple wasn't in the midst of us forevermore. Uh, you know, in the, in the second temple, man. Those temples were not forevermore. Those are not eternal temples, man. So this is not talking about those temples. Or those makwadashi. Dashi. Okay? So let's get another verse. All right. 
All right, man. This is going to be my 10th verse, man. This is my 10th verse proving that the Most High has a heavenly tabernacle, man, that uh, can't be destroyed. All right. Revelation 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. It was already, it been in heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold! The tabernacle of God is with man. It's the same tabernacle that was always in heaven. The same tabernacle and temple that you read about in Revelation. It will be with man. Just like we read in Ezekiel 37 and 27. That uh, his tabernacle will be among us. And his sanctuary among us forevermore. Just like it's read in Ezekiel 37 now. Same thing. Behold the tabernacle of God is with man. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God. OK, so that's the point, man. The point is his tabernacle is going to be with man. Revelations 21 and three. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with man. Okay, just like it says in Ezekiel 37 and 27, man. So let's get this word for tabernacle in Revelation 21 and 3. Tabernacle of God is with man. Right? So showing that this tabernacle is the one that's in heaven. His temple. Tabernacle. Habitation. Okay? Habitation and tabernacle. Alright? So let's get another verse. This is Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Right? So those temples were examples of the heavenly temple, man. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the temple. Right? For see, he saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Right? So it was an example of the heavenly tabernacle man where Hamashiach is on the right hand of majesty uh, on the throne man so uh, let's get some more Revelation chapter 15 verse 5 and after that I look and behold the temple of the tabernacle no nah, I ain't no temple brother it was destroyed the first and second temple was destroyed brother and after that, I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was, was open. When the seventh angels, and seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. So there is a temple, man, that man will be able to enter into. Strong's G, 3485, Naas, Naas. Right, and this is the word for temple in the Greek, man. And one of the main definitions I want to use is definition number three, which it says, metaphor, the spiritual temple consisting of the saints of all ages joined together by and in Christ, right? Uh, to dwell, a fame, shrine, temple, shrine, temple. Okay, so this is dealing with the temple that uh, all the Israelites that make the resurrection are going to go to, man. All right, this is my 13th verse, man, which is Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. And I said, Sir, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Those that make 
the uh, the resurrection, man, through the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple? He that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. So this is talking about in the resurrection, man. Serving the most high in his temple. He has a temple. All right, this is going to be my 14th verse. Proving that the most high has a temple, man. Revelations chapter 11, verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, rise, measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Right now, I'm going to jump down to verse 19. Revelations chapter 11, verse 19. Revelations 11 and 19. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. So the Most High has a temple that's in heaven, man. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, right? They have the testament of the new covenant in, in the temple, man. <laughs> It's in the heavens, beloved ones. And there was lightnings and voices and thunderings and a great earthquake and great hail. So we can't deny the new covenant, man. Saying that there's no temple, that's Nazariah and I not in them antichrist deny the new testament doctrine, man. That's what that is, man. Leave that nonsense alone, man. The most high has a temple in heaven, man. We can't act like he doesn't have a temple in heaven. For no man, let no man deceive you, right? The people that came out with the doctrine that there's no more temples and nothing like that, that was Inop and Nazariah, man, from ITR. Israelite tried to refine. You know, they read a few verses about Babylon and, and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, Ezra and Nehemiah, and now they think it ain't no more temples, man. No, man, the temple that Ezekiel prophesied about in Ezekiel 37 and 27, that's talking about the new Jerusalem, man. That's talking about the most highest tabernacle in heaven. All right, this is going to be my fourth, my 15th verse proven. This is my 15th verse proven that the most high has a temple in heaven using the new covenant, man. Right? Revelation chapter 14, verse 15. Revelation chapter 14 verse 15 and another angel came out of the temple nah brother ain't Nazariah and Inop said it ain't no temple so there ain't no more temples because Nazariah and Inop don't believe in the New Testament <laughs> and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time has come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he set on and he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth. And the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. Okay? Not Zerubbabel, Nehemiah and Ezra, and, and Cyrus the Great. Not Solomon right the temple which is in heaven okay and another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven he also having a sharp sickle man okay so this is referring to the temple in heaven yes there is a heavenly temple in heaven right where most high says his tabernacle will be with man isaiah 33 and 20 says a tabernacle that shall not be uh, removed, man. Okay, now I'm going to get my last verse. My last verse proving that there's a temple in heaven and uh, the Most High Ben said he had a temple in, in heaven. You know, it's an immortal temple, man. Which I'm going to get Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16, man, to end it off. All right. So, 
you know, you can't deny these scriptures about the temple in the New Testament, man. It's in the New Testament. It's in the New Covenant. Okay? So we can't act like there's not going to be a New Covenant uh, temple. Right? Which it already exists. Revelation chapter 16, verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple. Not talking about Solomon's temple. We ain't talking about uh, the temple that was built after Cyrus the Great and all that, man. I ain't talking about none of that, man. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of wrath of God upon the earth. Right? So these, this is talking about the heavenly temple, man. And I'm going to go to Revelation 16 and uh, 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne. So all that uh, Yahweh Shai is sitting on the throne. Yahweh Shai is in the temple with the Heavenly Father, man. He's in the temple. So saying it ain't no temple, that's denying Hamashiach. He, there is a heavenly temple. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. Okay? So, this is talking about the temple in heaven, man. Revelation 16 and 17 for my 17th verse. Right? And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven, man. Right? And uh, that proved we have a heavenly temple uh, those of us that are in the Messiah, man. All right. So let's jump down to, uh, and that's where the resurrection takes place in the temple. All right, in the courtroom. So uh, let's get another verse which uh, proves that there is a, a, a heavenly temple. Okay. I'm going to get a. Revelations 8 and uh, 3 and another angel came and stood at the altar. Wait a minute, there's an altar having a golden censer. Wait a minute, there's a golden censer as well? See, that's showing you there's a heavenly temple, man. If there's a hev if, if it ain't no heavenly temple or no more temples, there should be no more golden censers or altars. Why do we read about that in Revelation? And there was given unto him much incense. Wait a minute. There's incense in the temple in heaven as well? Just like it was on the temple on earth? That he shall offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which is before the throne. So in heaven, there's a throne, right? And a golden altar, man. And the smoke of the incense, right? So there is the incense altar, which came with the prayer of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand and the angel took the censer so the angel has a censer just like Aaron and the Levites had censers in the old covenant man so there is a heavenly temple man because if it ain't they shouldn't be dealing with the censers or none of that and filled it with fire of the altar so there's a heavenly altar and cast it into the earth okay so that's what it is. There's a heavenly altar, heavenly throne, heavenly temple, man. Not hard, man. All right. Nazariah and Ninoch, they deleted their temple video about Ezekiel's temple was the Babylon temple, which is total wickedness and folly, man. It's BS, man. Ezekiel, read Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel said, once King David is resurrected and Israel ain't worshiping idols and we've been saved out of all our dwelling places, that's when the Most High is going to put that tab that eternal tabernacle in the midst of us, in his sanctuary, in the midst of us forevermore. That ain't happened during uh, Babylon and captivity in Babylon. And it didn't happen uh, when we came out of Babylon because that temple wasn't there forevermore. Okay, Israel still went back off into idolatry and wickedness, man. And Israel wasn't saved in all, all their dwelling places because right after that, they went right back into captivity. So this is future prophecy, man. Let no man be God, you will be with you, beloved ones. There is a heavenly temple, man, and it's in the old covenant and it's in the new covenant. I brought out 18 verses in this video, man. Okay? 
So all praise up now with Yahweh by Shem Mashiach Yahweh Shah, Kahalala now with Kazak Yahweh, Barak Shem Kah, Barak Yahweh Shah, Peace and blessings to all the beloved ones.